In this session, we're going to take a look at the interactive fill tool. I know that we've looked at the fill from the object properties docker in some of our earlier sessions, but we do want to be aware of this tool. I use it quite frequently, and it's very powerful. We're going to see that in this session. I've got a couple of different objects set up down here, some simple text in Apple, and I've got a t-shirt comp set up. We want to take a look at some of the functionality that we have available through this tool, and then we'll be able to see where and how we can apply it, and we might where and how we might want to use this tool. We've got a basic Apple set up here, and we're going to apply interactive fill to that. And you'll find that tool all the way down here at the bottom of the toolbar. Go ahead and click on that. I'll come here to my Apple, left click, hold down, and drag, and then release. Now what I've just done is I've just created a linear fill by dragging that out. And I want to come up here to the properties bar and change that to a radial. And now you can see what we've got is we've got two color chips with a sliding bar in the middle. I'm going to bring this highlight up here to the corner. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide this midpoint and change where that is. And that's the midpoint for that fountain fill. You can see there's a starting and ending here. And here's the midpoint. You could also adjust that up here in the properties bar. Now if I want to do some additional tweaking to this, I could go to, let's say, my CMYK color palette. We'll bring that up here. And I'll just scroll up here to the top. What I want to do is I want to get a darker red into a lighter red into a pink to kind of soften this highlighting up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and left click here on this color chip and drag it over here just a bit, as you can see there. And I'm going to go ahead and move this white over just a bit also. Next thing I'm going to do is, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to click off and click on. And what I'm going to do is come over here to the red, left click, hold down, and release. Now I've got some different reds here. Now I can take this red here, which is a little bit darker, left click, hold down, keep holding, and drag that over and release that in the red. And that'll change that red tip. Or I could have just selected that red, which is now selected, and then gone and clicked on the color. I'm going to take the regular red here, left click, hold down, and bring that right about here and you'll see what happens is, is that when I drop this I'm going to lose my midpoint and my properties bar is also going to change what happened is is that this red became like a midpoint here it's not actually a midpoint but just they get rid of the midpoint because now I've got multiple colors in my radio I can left click hold down and drag that as you can see there and then I'll come up here take my pink left click drag and drop that into what was the white and now I've got a very soft highlight on my apple as you can see they're done with the interactive fill tool let's create a, a metallic looking fill over here on the interactive fill tool text go back down to my interactive fill tool go ahead and click here left click hold down and drag once I've selected that and release now what I've got now is two whites I've got white going into white with this linear fountain fill I'm going to go ahead and get some darker gray here. And we'll go ahead and drop that there. Same thing here. Left click and drop. And then I'm going to come down through here and just get different colors of gray and drop those in here. And just release them along the line, kind of randomly or sporadically. And I'll go with some of the darker here and some more of the darker here. So now I've got pretty much a gray fill. But what I'm going to do is come back in with some lighter colors, as you can see here, and just put those in between the two. And what I'm creating now is kind of like a brushed metallic fill in my graphic using the Smart Fill tool. And this allows me to get a very good preview and work interactively with my art. If we click off, we can see that. Now if we want to change that, Let's say we want to rotate a little bit. We can left click on the end, color chip here, same thing here, turn that out and stretch it out. You can see we start to get more effect. A lot of different op options when you're working with this tool. Now here I've got a t-shirt comp. And I want to see what this comp is going to look like as perhaps an all over texture print. Well, what I want to do in that case is I'm going to go back to my smart fill tool. And I'm going to go ahead, actually what I'm going to do is make sure I got the right object selected first. You can see we've got some shading on top of a vector object. 
So I've got my vector object here, and that's where I want to apply my Smart Fill. Come down here to the Smart Fill tool. I'll come up here to a full color pattern. And you can see that that was applied to the design. Now with that pattern applied, I can left click up here on these handles and move and change the size of that seamless pattern in my t-shirt. Let's take a look at a full color, well we'll go to it, not a full color, but a bitmap pattern fill. And we'll go with let's say a metallic look here. And you can see how that worked. And I'm going to go ahead and move this. Now from the center point of these handles, you can left click hold down and move the way in which the seamless tile is applied to the graphic or where it's applied. Left click, hold down, and rotate this. And I can really get very good control over this fill. Now I'm going to go ahead and select my shading and hold down shift and select my fill. I'll hit C and E. That'll center those and then I'll have a really good idea of what that's going to look like with a metallic texture fill in it. And I've got very good control. I'll hold down Alt over how that seamless fill is applied to my graphic. If I want to see how it looked bigger, left click on that circle and hold that. I could also skew that as you can see here. So it gives us very interactive control over how our fills are applied to our graphics working with the interactive fill tool in CorelDRAW X6. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.